Hi guys, welcome back. And today is my Vanguard portfolio update video for March. Quite a lot has actually happened in this past month since my last update. So I'm very excited to share this one with you. And of course, we are now approaching the end of the tax year. For those of you who haven't seen this channel before, I basically track what's in my stocks and shares ISA, so my investment portfolio every single month. And the whole idea is to be really transparent and show beginners out there, or perhaps people that haven't started investing yet, that you can start and you don't need to be a multi-millionaire to actually be able to invest. That's the whole aim of this. So what you'll see here is my Vanguard portfolio. And that's my Vanguard ISA, so my stocks and shares ISA. And that means that this money in this ISA account, in this investment account is tax protected. So I do have some other investments elsewhere, but this is the majority of the money that I try to invest because you know it's got that nice tax protection. So here we are, I've logged into my Vanguard account and we're on the homepage now. The first thing that I'd like to point out and the biggest change from last month is the total ISA value. So I've got it here. Last month, my total ISA value was £3,111.81. It currently sits at £6,336.12. And that's because I made a big lump sum investment into this account, trying to get as much money in there before the end of the tax year. Now, I am probably moving my ISA from Vanguard for an array of reasons, not because I don't love Vanguard, because I absolutely do, but I'm at the stage now where I would like some more options, some more investment options. And with Vanguard, if you didn't know, you only really get to invest into their funds, Vanguard funds. Now, these are fantastic options, and I would recommend any beginner having a look into Vanguard and seeing if it's something that you're interested in, because the fees are low and the options are great, but the options are limited, and you don't get to pick any individual stocks which means that if I invest into individual stocks, they are liable for taxes because they're not inside of my tax protected ISA account. And that's why I'm probably moving ready for the tax year. Not to say that I won't come back to Vanguard because I do think they're a fantastic platform, but this has led to me trying to put as much money, as many of my savings into this account before the end of the tax year. Now, I know for a lot of people investing 3,000 pound, which I did recently, and we'll get onto that in a minute, is not very much and a total ISA value of just over £6,000 is not that impressive. I'm aware of that, but I'm very new. I only started investing not that long ago and I plan to build this over time. And I plan to have my ISA next year where I invest more than I've been able to this year. My circumstances have changed. I have spent the last seven-ish months unemployed. Through my own choice, I decided to take some time off and use my savings and just do things I enjoy doing. Filming YouTube videos, working on a little side business and you know, just enjoying my life in general. Um, I've now gone back to full-time employment, which a lot of you will know, and I'm absolutely loving my job, which is fantastic. But it also means that I will have more money to be able to invest, and invest in myself and my financial future. And part of that, I'm going to start building a dividend portfolio alongside this. So the whole idea is that I, I leave this, if I don't go with Vanguard, I'll just leave this as it is. I will not pay any more into this if I change my ISA provider because that's not allowed. And I'll just leave this growing in the background and I will potentially put more money into ETFs and index funds, but it will be with a different provider. Or I will come back to Vanguard next year, next tax year, not the one coming up, and put more money in then. But anyway, enough rambling on, let's get to the numbers. So yeah, you'll see that my ISA value currently sits at, at this amount. And the next thing you'll probably notice is how much I've got left of my ISA value, which is a lot, and I'm not gonna be able to fill this within the next couple of weeks, which is when the tax year runs out. Largest holding is the S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol VUSA. A lot of investors absolutely love this fund and I am one of them. And what you'll see is this makes up over half of my entire ISA. So it makes up 60.43%. Now, some people may say that's really silly because I'm not diversifying as, not, um, as much as maybe I should. But my argument to that would be, well, although they're US companies, they are global companies, right? I'm investing in massive global companies through the S&P 500. That would be my argument. And I think it's a fantastic, fantastic thing to invest into. The next thing you'll notice is personal rate of return is 13.12% since the account opened. 
Now this figure is a little bit weird because last month, let me have a look what it was. Last month, my personal rate of return was 8.66%. So that shot up a lot for two reasons. One, because the markets have gone up since I filmed my last video. But two, because I deposited, I made an investment of a lot, quite a lot of money, a substantial amount of money. So that shot it up as well. Available cash, not very interesting there. I need to make sure that's got enough to pay for fees but that'll be fine. And then my last transaction, we'll get onto in a minute. Um, so that, that's the home screen, that's the overview. But now let's have a look at the investments I've made since last video, so since last month. Oh, actually, before we get onto that, we'll just have a look at my holdings. I'm very aware of this, but a lot of the comments from last month's video um, was that I have a lot of overlap. And that's absolutely right. Like, I completely agree with anyone that left that comment. I have a lot of overlap in this portfolio. And as a beginner, I did make that mistake. It's a hard mistake not to make because when you're a beginner, you don't really understand what you're investing in fully and you can buy bits and bobs and then realize that you've got a lot of overlap, which is what happened to me. I do want to sort this out and I'm gonna to need to get on with it really, but my plan, and I'm gonna make a whole video on this as long as I can fit it in before the end of the tax year, before the beginning of the new tax year, sorry. My plan is to primarily cut this portfolio right down. So currently I have the FTSE 100, FTSE Developed Europe Excluding UK, FTSE Global All Cap, S&P 500 and the ESG Global All Cap. You'll see that here. So that is one, two, three, four, five funds. I'm going to cut that down to three, potentially two. Like I said, I'm going to get into the details in a separate video, but essentially all I want here is my global all cap and my S&P and I will perhaps as well leave the FTSE 100, but I just won't add to it. I'll just leave that ticking along in the background. As you can also see, I don't have very much money at all into these other two, the global all cap uh, ESG and also the FTSE developed Europe excluding UK. I don't have much money in them and I don't really need them. Um, I'm getting what I need in the other funds and I probably just cut this down and just make it simpler. I will still have overlap if of course I have the FTSE Global All Cap and the S&P 500. Even if I cut this down to just them two funds, there will be overlap because Global All Cap has its largest holding, I believe, in the US. And that's exactly what I'm getting with the S&P 500. My argument, however, would be that with the Global All Cap, I'm getting all cap, obviously, Global All Cap, and I'm getting a global, a global, um, you know, I'm getting a global market. I'm getting, how do I say this? <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting diversification globally. That's what I wanted. Yeah, I'm getting the US, which I am getting with the S&P 500. But I guess if you believe that the US market and these big companies are going to do well, then some duplication, I don't think really matters too much. With the FTSE 100, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't really decided what I want to do there because here's my thoughts. I'm getting exposure to the UK market with the global all cap. So I could argue that I can just get rid of my FTSE 100, sell out of that position whilst I'm in profit and put it straight back into one of the funds I'm keeping. And I am planning to get a lot of UK stocks in my dividend portfolio. So you would also argue I probably don't need that. But I also don't know whether to just cut my losses with it and just leave it ticking along in the background and just not put any more into it. Still thinking about that. Anyway, so I am up £73 on my FTSE 100, down £2.55 on FTSE Developed Europe, excluding the UK, up by only £6.79 in the FTSE Global All Cap. That is going to be affected. That's a global tracker and yeah, things aren't too great right now. However, they're on the up from what we were last month. S&P 500, I'm up the most by £162.95. And lastly, I'm down by a grand total of 41 pennies, 41 British pennies for the ESG global all cap. So that's puts me in the total position of being in a positive for this portfolio, for being in a plus of 239 pounds 78 P. So I'm, I'm happy with that. This is a portfolio that, you know, if it goes down today, up tomorrow, down for three weeks, up for one week, down for two years, it doesn't really matter. In the long run, I know it's gonna go up and this is going to be something I don't touch for many, many years. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Let's just have a look at the performance here. Again, we can see a massive jump from the 11th of March to the 18th of March. I made an investment, right? That's why it's such a jump. I didn't just make the best choice and the markets went crazy. That's not what happened here. 
Um, so let's have a look at what investments I actually made. What you'll see is in March, I made two investments here. I made one, well, I, I made them both together and I actually documented it in a video. So do watch that if you're interested, I'll pop it on the screen somewhere now. I put in a thousand pound into the global all cap and 2000 pound, but because you can't buy fractional shares, it actually came out as 1,991 pound, four pennies into the S&P 500. So I got 31 units worth of S&P 500 and near on six units of the global all cap. So they're the investments I've made since my last portfolio update. Also, I just thought it'd be interesting. I don't normally share this on my portfolio update videos, but for anyone that may be wondering whether they want to go with Vanguard for the next tax year, um, and you're wondering about maybe some of the fees you'd pay on an account like this, here you go, fully transparent. Here are the account fees that I've been paying. They are pennies. They are literally pennies. Here, 39p, 50p, £1.11, 91p. So you can see just how cheap Vanguard really are. Um, you don't really pay very much with Vanguard, but as I said, you're limited to what you can invest in. These are very much, you know, you don't get individual stocks. They're very much passive investments. So if that's something you want, maybe consider Vanguard. But yeah, I'll leave it there. If you are interested in watching any of my other Vanguard portfolio updates, please click here.